Are you finally starting to reach that point in your saltwater aquarium where you're about to begin adding corals? But knowing which corals to add is a daunting process. In this video we're going to talk all about which corals are great for beginners so you can have the best start to your coral journey. Hi, I'm Richard from the Beginners Reef and I'm here to help you succeed with your saltwater aquarium by providing you with great information, tips and resources. If you're new to these videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and any links you mention in this video you can find in the description below. Be sure to stick around towards the end of this video, I've got a great beginner's tip that's going to really really help you with your saltwater aquarium. I still remember the first time I got my first coral frag. I was so excited. I just went in, stuck it on my tank, and a week later it was all bleached and white. It was horrendous. This video is all about helping you decide which is going to be the best beginner corals for you, and what are the most popular beginner corals, why they're so good, where you can place them, what you need to feed them, what light do they need. Hopefully really good information for you so that when you go out to purchase your first fragment of coral, you know exactly what you're gonna get, where it's gonna go in your aquarium, and it's gonna just thrive and be an awesome start to your coral keeping journey. Number one on my list for the best beginner corals have gotta be zoanthids and palytheros, or also known as zoas and pallies. These are always the first coral that I recommend any beginner start with because they are so easy to get, they are so colourful and they are really really hardy and easy to keep. They are some of my favourite corals and the colourations that you can find them in is just endless and breathtaking. You can place them anywhere and if your conditions are right they'll grow fast, they'll multiply quickly and they can really do wonders for filling in holes between more prominent colony corals. There's so many people that have just entire tanks of zoas and pallies and they just look awesome. They're really really cheap to buy and you can also get the ones that are really expensive to buy. Some of them and um, they can be up at 7500 bucks per head um, but I suggest you stay away from them. Just go to your local store Get some frags of some zoas, place them on your rock work and they will thrive. They generally range in diameter from anywhere from a, a quarter of an inch up to three quarters of an inch. You can place them on the bottom of your rock work, on the top. And they like any kind of light from shady to full exposure. They do require good flow, just like any coral, so moderate to high flow. Just don't have any power heads pointing directly at them. Just have your flow going over the top of them and they will be happy. They don't need any supplemental feeding, but if you do give them foods, uh, uh, zooplankton, phytoplankton, uh, coral frenzy, bulk reef supplies, reef chili, they will really grow quickly. I usually get mine with a turkey baster and I just give them a blast and just before lights out the polyps are out and they just take this stuff in and just shrivel up and they love it. They're really really easy to keep, really easy to find and colorations you can find any colour to match the colour that you're trying to put in that part of the aquarium. Really really cool. You can put them next to one another, different types different colours, they all just flow well together and you can create beautiful zoa gardens as they are known with multiple different colours and multiple different size heads and they look fantastic. So definitely number one on my list is the zoas and palythoas. Number two on the list are mushrooms. These are another awesome call for beginners. These things are bulletproof. They're like cockroaches. You just have to try really 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 hard to kill them. They are super super hardy. You can get them in really bright oranges, reds, blues, greens. You can get them with patterns on them. They are really nice corals to start with. They do best lower down towards the bottom of your tank with lower flow. So they're, they're really good to start 
put them at the bottom of your aquarium, let them grow out. They do gain most of their energy from the light source, but again, just like the Zoas, you give them supplemental feeding, their mouth in the middle of their disc there will readily accept food, and again, they'll shrivel up around the food and, uh, and consume it. So yeah, really, really good. Generally, really easy to find in the fish stores, and they're relatively cheap, and yeah, they're bulletproof. You put some mushrooms in your tank, and they're probably going to be the last thing standing if you have any problems. But really cool beginner coral. Number three on the list are the toadstool leather corals. These are really popular beginner corals. They are a little bit muted in colours. You can find them usually in the browns, pinks, sometimes the neon greens, but you're going to pay for those ones. They are, they are really expensive. They do grow large up to 10 inches so you want to place them kind of mid-range in your aquarium but also bear in mind when they do grow large they're going to fan out and they're going to shadow anything that's below it so any corals that uh, require a little less light like mushrooms can generally go below where the leather coral is going to create a shadow. They do require high to moderate lighting hence the reason why you want to place them in the middle of your rock work. Moderate flow, but again, don't point your power heads directly at them. They have been known for clownfish to host them when they get bigger. Uh, because they have their tentacles, sometimes the clowns feel like that's their home and they feel secure in there. Which is cool. If you can get a toadstool and you get clowns in it, it's a showpiece in your aquarium. They look really cool. But just bear in mind that they can grow big. And so just be careful where you put them and what you put underneath it but a really hardy coral for a beginner to start with. Number four on my list, I've kind of grouped these two together because they're almost very similar. Uh, it's the hammer coral and the frog spawn corals. These are beautiful corals. You can get them in all different kind of color variations with purple legs, with green tips, to green legs with purple tips, blue, yellows, really, really nice easy to keep they're not you're probably your first coral that you want to get but after about six to eight months if you're having your aquarium come out of its cycle and you've already had some corals these are probably another thing to um, to progress on to they can be situated next to one another so i in my aquarium i have a hammer garden where i've got a blue i've got a green and purple and a golden hammer all together they're all placed right next to one another and they all kind of intermingle and they look awesome. Um, I've also got a frog spawn garden that's got the regular green purple tip and a golden frog spawn next to one another and they look really really cool. They do really good in the mid to upper high placement on the rock work just because they require higher lighting conditions so you definitely want to be having good LEDs T5s or metal halides with these and they do require moderate to high flow. They do have a, well they're, they're classed as an LPS coral so they're a large polystony. So they do have a hard skeleton base and what you'll find is over time is these bases will grow branches and then more heads will appear. Um, so they can grow pretty well. They are a bit slower growing but once you get them growing they, they will multiply pretty quickly and before you know it your little two head frag of frog spawn or hammer coral has turned into a six head frag and now you've got a ball that's about four inches across. So yeah they are really really nice corals but just be careful because they can have sweeper tentacles so they are tentacles that they release at night to fend off other approaching corals. So I generally tend to put these towards the edge of the tank, just out of the way, and keep all the corals that I don't mind getting stung or lost within around about a four inch radius of these, because yeah, if they do feel threatened at night, they'll send out the sweeper tentacles to attack and sting neighboring corals. But apart from that, really nice coral. They'll really bring some uh, movement and color diversity to your aquarium. Next on the list is the feather dusters. These are cool little guys. I've had them for absolutely years and years. And in pretty much every aquarium that I've owned, I've had these feather dusters because I think they're so cool to watch. They are basically a worm that lives in a tube that it creates and it sticks out the fan 
out the top end of the tube and that fan is there to collect particles of food out of the water and pull them into its mouth. When it feels threatened by a fish, it basically pulls the entire crown, as it's called, into the tube. So all of a sudden it just disappears. And then over time, a couple of minutes later, it'll come back out and just reopen, kind of like a, a peacock's uh, plumage. It's just really, really nice. You can get them in browns, greens, purples, really cool colorations. They can grow anywhere from about one to seven inches in diameter. And you want to place them on the bottom because they like to be kind of around the sand bed so that the worm can actually continue building the tube further down as it grows. They are good for shadowy areas because they don't rely so much on the light. They're filter feeders. So these are a good coral to place under your bigger corals like your leather coral where they can have lower lighting. They require a moderate flow because they need the food to be brought to them with the flow. But again, don't have your power heads blasting at it. If the crown is all bent over to one side like a tree in the wind, then it's getting too much flow. You just want the crown to be gently moving in the flow. These guys will do really well if you supplement their feeding with reef roids, reef chilies, phytoplankton, anything like that. They'll just take it out of the water and they'll really, really grow. They do drop their crowns from time to time. So if all of a sudden you see the crown on the sand bed, don't worry about it. They, they do that and within you know a week or two, there'll be a new crown poking back out. Yeah, don't be afraid of that. But yeah, really cool, really nice coral for a beginner. They're really, really hardy and they're great for, for low shadowy areas and uh, that you may struggle to find a coral that will, will thrive there. So really good coral to have. Number six on my list are the torch corals. These are another kind of LPS coral where it has a hard skeleton base and then the tentacles come out from the, uh, from the skeleton. Really nice colorations and the tentacles on these can grow up to about six inches in length and they make them look really nice to catch the eye because the tentacles sway back and forth in the flow and just give a really nice motion to the aquarium. They come in great colorations from green with white tips, yellows, goldens with purple tips, purple with green tips, you name it, there's all kinds of colorations. And the cool thing about these, they're just like the hammers and the frog spawn, where you can put several of them together. I've got a purple and green one next to one another in my aquarium and the, the tentacles intermix and they just look phenomenal in the light. They want to be placed anywhere around about the mid area of your tank because they do require moderate to high lighting, moderate to high flow. Again, they want to be moving with the current, not being blasted by the current, and they get most of their energy from the light, but they will take supplemental feedings just like all the other corals. If you want to spray a load of food into it with your turkey baster, they will definitely take that up. But yeah, really cool coral. Just again, wait till your tank is at least about six months old before buying one of these guys. They can be on the expensive side, about 50 bucks. So you don't wanna be going and using the money that you have to buy these as one of your first corals and it doesn't survive. They do wanna have pretty good stability in the water. So just make sure you're on top of your maintenance and your water changes. You got good lights, plenty of flow, and you should have no problems keeping the torch coral. And last on the list is the Kenya tree. This is another coral that really adds a nice motion to your aquarium. And it gets its name because it looks like a tree. It's full of branches and on all the branches it has polyps that extend and it just sways back and forth in the current and it looks really, really nice. You can get them in many colors from white through to purple through to bright green. Again, those bright green ones, you'll pay for them because the, like any coral, the more vivid the coloration, the more dollars it's going to cost you. They grow really well and you have to just be a little bit careful with these because they will drop branches and those branches will sprout into new coral frag. So these make them almost a perfect coral for your first coral frags um, to sell because you can pick up the branches off the, the rock or the sand and just super glue them to a frag plug, stick them on a frag rack inside your aquarium and when they've taken hold onto the frag plug, just go sell it for 20 bucks. And then there you go, you've got enough money to go buy another coral frag. 
you can place them anywhere. They like shadow, they like highlight, they like low light, but they generally do better when they have a higher light exposure. They do like high flow, but again, not direct flow, so just have it so it's waving in the flow and they do require supplemental feeding. So zooplankton, phytoplankton, coral frenzy, reef roids, oyster egg, you name it, throw it in there once in a while. Uh, this will take it out of the water and it'll really help it, um, it grow and continue to drop its branches and give you more frags. So, so yeah, really cool coral, super hardy. One of my best recommendations for beginners. So that is the Kenya tree to finish off the list. I hope you enjoyed that selection. It's a really, really good list of bulletproof corals that's going to really thrive and do well in an aquarium. They're nice hardy corals, so it's going to make it an easy start for you to keep corals in your saltwater aquarium. Just try and keep your water parameters as stable as you can, and that will really help the corals to flourish and grow. Give them supplemental feedings of things like reef chili or reef roids is gonna really see the corals explode in growth and color. And as promised, your beginner tip, when you first start getting into corals, always dip every single coral before it goes in your aquarium. It's kind of like a uh, quarantine process for your corals. You wanna make sure there's no hitchhikers on there. So no eggs, no bugs, no flatworms, no aptasia, no bubble algae. Uh, if you're not sure about dipping corals, I've got an awesome article step by step on how to dip corals. You can find that in the description below. Um, but make sure you stick around. We've got lots of other great videos that I think is really, really going to help you out. When you get a spare five minutes, I really recommend you head over to thebeginnersreef.com. It's full of great articles, just answering some of the most basic questions that a beginner has. And I'll see you next time.